What is going on guys? Welcome back. This is video number 10. 10, right? I know it's been a little while, but I have been doing so much work on this game. And I was recently looking back on some of my old videos. So much has changed since I, got, I showed you guys that first demo video. And I want to do an update video at some point where I show you guys the progress I've made. Um, not much has changed for the kind of stuff we're doing right now. It's mostly with you know, the menu designs and stuff like that. And, you know, if I showed it to you now, you would see that there are a lot of differences. Um, and I will do that at some point um, soon. But in this video, in any case, we're going over something really cool. Um, we're actually going to be going over animation techniques and basically how you do them. If you guys have heard of like, you know, request animation frames, for you know using game loops and stuff like that that's exactly what we're going to be covering and all the animations that i do in my projects are all custom they're not i'm not using any frameworks i'm not using like jquery animate or anything like that all the animations i write are all from scratch um and they're all custom so that's going to be really really handy for you guys because you're going to be able to write whatever you want you're not going to have to rely on you know an outside framework to handle your animations for you you can write it all on your own and you know some people may not like doing it that way just because it it takes a little bit more time and a little more effort and more things can go wrong but there's a reason why i don't use jquery animate it actually slows your performance by a lot and in this case you know we only have one game loop and we put all of our animate functions in that game loop and then we just you know tell the loop when to call specific pieces of code and so i'm going to show you guys how to do that we're going to build the game loop and we're going to build our first function that with a custom animation. All right, so let's get started. Um, well, firstly, what we're gonna do is we're sitting here at the top of our document, and what we wanna do right here is essentially we're gonna add like a new, essentially just, well, I mean, we're setting the window dot request animation frame. And I guess that's not gonna code sense for me, but so you type in just a window dot request animation frame. So um, here we're just gonna set it equal to, you know, either the request dot animation frame, um, or in this case, just if, if we're dealing with something like, you know how we use down here our, uh, you know, our web kits. Well, in this case, we're just gonna do the same thing here and we're going to set, you know, a web kit request animation frame oops okay request animation frame and there are more um, you know there's MOZ for Firefox and stuff but like you know there's not a Firefox mobile well I mean not in this case because we're doing you know native style on uh, the iPhone so really you only need the regular and then the web kit and you know, that'll, that'll work fine for what we're doing right now. And then the next big thing is we are gonna make a new function here at the top. And we're gonna just call this game loop. And now this function is where you put every animation that you run, you put the update function in here because this game loop is running every frame while the game is running. So essentially what you do at the bottom here is you just write that window dot request animation frame as a function and you pass in game loop it's much better than set interval style of animating and so now i mean that's really all you need to get a game loop going at this point and now all you need to do is just call game that game loop function once and when the game first loads and when you do that the game loop will start and then it will never end because you know you're calling game loop every single time you run the game loop function so it's just going to go on forever and ever um you know and then what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how to actually build or what i do at least for custom animations and so in this case we we jump down here and we i'm going to jump right into the universe you know under our touch end and I'm gonna make a new object inside of this object. And we're gonna call it focus. And focus, essentially, when you call the universe.focus, what focus is doing 
is if you noticed in my video, the demo that I did, when you let go when you're dragging, it automatically zooms to whatever the closest system is to the middle of the screen. So it doesn't just stay where it is, it, it focuses to the closest system so that there's always a system in the middle when you let go. And so the idea there is that you know, you need to build some kind of animation because you're not the previous one that we had where you're actually dragging your finger and it's moving the systems. We had some kind of input there, you know, from your finger so we could adjust that stuff, but here we don't have any input. So essentially we need to just grab a lot of values and we need to figure out, we need, we eventually need to write a function that figures out what the closest system is you know, and then build an animation function that actually slides to that closest one. But right now I'm not covering that. I'm covering, you know, how we use this animation or how we build these custom animations. So what I do is basically every time you're going to create a custom animation, I put four parameters, at least four parameters. You have a frame, which we'll just say 15. I, I always set it to whatever the frames is because what it, the difference here is the frame, it would be the current frame that the animation is on and then frames would be the max number of animations you want. So if you want 15 frames, and remember the average game or the average animation time on this is going to be about 60 frames per second. So you know if we did 30, you know we're half a second, about half a second here. So. And then those two are just like variables. And then we're going to make this one an object or a function called init. And essentially this is what you call when you want to animate. And then what this does is you, so, okay, so you call that and then we'll just write in this last function so that we have an understanding um, of what else is going on here. Sorry, let me give me some more space here. Okay, so essentially what happens now is this will make more sense when I say, okay, now the universe, and a lot of you are probably gonna say, why aren't you using this, you know, this dot frame. And honestly, if anybody can explain this in the comments, um, I always have a problem with this. Like sometimes like this just, it won't work. It um, it's really inconsistent for me because sometimes it will because I really want to use it because it's so much easier but then sometimes it just doesn't work for me and I have to change it back um, so in this case I'm not going to use this but if you guys if someone knows why you know it's not consistent um, please post you know some kind of explanation for that in the description or in the uh, comments but anyways in this case I'm just going to use universe dot focus dot frame and you would set it to zero. So this is kind of making sense now because essentially this update function right here, if we jump up now to the top and we know that that function, we need to be animating that, then we say universe.focus.update. And now, so every frame of the game, it will be running this function. But now you're wondering, well, you know, it's running every frame, but what if I don't want to be animating it? It's still running. Well, in this case, yes, it is still running that function, but we add a, a parameter in here or an if, basically an if statement that checks that will only run it if the universe dot f or dot focus dot frame is less than the universe dot focus dot frames. So now you'll notice this if statement won't even be running when the game first loads because the frame and the frames are the same number. So if they're the same number, then one can't be lower than the other, which means this if statement doesn't qualify. So yes, it will be calling the update function every frame, but nothing will happen inside of that function until you set the frame to zero. And then the frame is less than this, so now it will start running the code that's inside of this if statement. And then of course, one thing, one more thing in here that's going to make even more sense now is if we say universe.focus.frame++. So now every frame that we're running this if statement, we're adding one to the frame. 
which means that it's going to be out of 30. So every frame we go one, two, three, four, five until we get to 30. And then once we hit 30, you know, there's nothing, we can't do it anymore. This if statement won't run anymore. So here, this is the basic, very basic frame of a custom animation. And in the next video, I will go over easing because that was always one of the big things about jQuery animate that I loved was the fact that you had easing. And I just like, I didn't know how to do the easings in this, you know, because like you assume that in this case, everything's going to be linear, you know, because you can, you know, if you want something to move a hundred pixels, then you would just grab the frame and you would get the frame average and then get the average out of a hundred. So, you know, if you're on frame 15, then that's half of 30. So you would get 50% of a hundred and I would give you 50, you know, and that would be the position on that frame, you know, and, but that's a linear animation. And like, we don't always want linear animations. We want, you know, you know, fancier curves to our animations. So, um, I will show you in the next video how to get those easings, those custom easing animations. And it's going to be super cool, but here we go. This right here is the fundamentals of your custom animations. And you can use this for anything, for any kind of animation you want to do. And all you need to do is make sure that you put that update in the game loop and then just call this in it, in it whenever you want to run the animation and that will cover all the bases there for you. All right, guys, well, I will see you again in video number 11. So stick around because we are going over the easing and make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying the series and give me a thumbs up and guys, I will catch you later. See ya.